And to get a wider perspective on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, we are joined by Her Excellency, Madame Ambassador Ludmila Vorobieva. Hi, Madame Ambassador. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Right. So, first of all, I want to ask, um, prior to all of this, Russian authorities had uh, promised or affirmed that they would not have their military enter into Ukraine. But as we know, there's conflict going on in Ukraine between Russian and Ukrainian forces. So tell us, what is the reason behind this? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, we're not uh, having a war uh, and conduct uh, conducting a war against Ukrainian people. It's, it's the least of our wishes to do so. And uh, we try to solve the problem with diplomatic uh, actions uh, for many years, for eight years, actually. And uh, this is the last solution, I would say, uh, to prevent uh, even uh, bigger conflict uh, happening in uh, Europe. So this is not a war uh, against Ukrainian people. It's a special military uh, operation. And uh, the reason for that, that for eight, eight years, there was a war so going war on. Against, uh, the Ukraine. Uh, oh. There was a war going on against uh, Donbass, the Lugansk and uh, Donetsk uh, regions. Right, but um, so you are saying that this is not a war between the Ukrainian people and the Russian forces. But of course, right now, Russian military forces are fighting Ukraine forces and even Ukrainian citizens are joining in the fight. So it seems that there is a conflict going on right now between Russian and Ukrainian forces and even Ukrainian citizens. Uh, Madam Ambassador. Uh, well, of course, the military operation always uh, involves uh, fighting uh, with uh, military uh, forces. But uh, our Ministry of Defense uh, actually stated uh, several times that we're not targeting civilians. We're targeting only military installations uh, in Ukraine. And in fact, we're helping the uh, we're helping Lug uh, Lugansk and Donetsk uh, republics to uh, free their territory from Ukrainian uh, army. Once again, we are not targeting civilians in Ukraine. We see Ukrainians as our brothers and sisters. We don't want to occupy Ukraine or to harm the interests of Ukrainian people. Of course, Russian authorities have said that they don't intend to take control over Ukraine. But as we know right now, there are Russian forces you know, um, entering into Ukrainian towns, and even the capital city of Ukraine here is being attacked by Russian forces. So what is the goal then, if it's not to take control over Ukrainian cities and towns? Well, we, uh, our president have cited many times that uh, the uh, aim of our operation is to demilitarize and denazify uh, Ukraine. So uh, we, that's why we're targeting the military installations uh, in Ukraine. And uh, if you ask me what, what is the reason, the reason is that for uh, eight years now, Western uh, powers have been pumping uh, defense or let us say military equipment uh, into Ukraine have been training uh, Ukrainian forces and have been uh, trying to make uh, an anti-Russia from Ukraine. And uh, maybe you've heard also the statement by President Zelensky that Ukraine uh, ha had the intention to have uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, so what uh, Western powers are doing is bringing NATO military infrastructure to uh, Russian borders. For eight years, Russia has been trying to uh, solve this uh, conflict by peaceful means and uh, as a conflict inside Ukraine. So uh, our military operation is the last resort to stop the war. You know, uh, Russia has participated in many wars, but uh, the aim that we always pursued was to stop the war, not to start it. We're trying to stop the war. Um, does that mean that Russia does not intend to remove the Ukrainian government right now? Is there no intention to do that? It will be uh, the 
will and the desire of the Ukrainian people, what they will want to do after Ukraine will be demilitarized and uh, denazified. Our, uh, our aim is to create condition when the people of Ukraine could make their choice without interference from outside and establish a government they they will uh, like and they will uh, need because uh, it's it's an open secret uh, it has been stated many times that the western powers have, have pumped billion of dollars billion of dollars into ukraine to uh, make this anti russian project out of uh, ukraine uh, and uh, in fact, uh, to make Ukraine even an anti-Russian military bastion. So uh, that presented a threat to our national interest and to our security. Right. This needed right. to be stopped. Right. So, I mean, uh, we've, we've also discussed this in our previous talk as well. Um, Russia has security concerns, but does that, uh, net, does that need a sudden or a, a large military operation into Ukraine to solve that? Doesn't that push Ukraine further into the West, into NATO? Doesn't that make them want to join NATO even more and make the security concerns even higher for Russia, Madam Ambassador? I'm absolutely sure that Ukrainians, ordinary Ukrainians, have no desire to uh, join NATO. And uh, we want the voices of ordinary Ukrainians to be heard, not just the government who has been used as a political instrument uh, by, by the West. Uh, and uh, we want to have peace and stability. We want at last between Russia and Ukraine. We want to live in peace with our uh, neighbors and not to be threatened from their territory. Okay, Madam Ambassador. So I suppose I have to ask you, what is sort of the end game uh, from Russia's point of view? This is the well, as, as I said, uh, for, for the time being, we want to see uh, Ukraine demilitarized and denazified. We are uh, conducting talks with the Ukrainian side, as you know, uh, they, uh, yesterday they finally started. We've been waiting for Ukrainian side to appear at this talks for 24 hours. They fi finally showed up. Uh, there were five hours talks, uh, and according to the head of our delegation, Mr. Medinsky, um, he told us in his press briefing that uh, we found some points of compromise uh, with the uh, Ukrainian side and agreed to have uh, more talks uh, in the uh, days uh, to come. So that will be the subject of uh, discussion. Right. So as we know right now, there are talks going on between Russian and Ukrainian delegates. But will there be a ceasefire during these talks, Madam Bess? Well, uh, at, at first, when we were uh, waiting for a response from the Ukrainian side, whether they will come to the talks or not, uh, they, the, our, our, our military operation has been stopped, but they were changing their mind all the time. We were waiting for them for 24 hours, so, so far, no ceasefire. So far, no ceasefire. Okay, um, there's going to be a second talk, um, as you just said. In, is that in the few days or a few days to come? Do you have any? Yes, that's what we heard from the head of the Russian delegation that the two sides uh, decide to have uh, the second round of the talks very soon. Okay, now between now and the second talk, wouldn't it be better if there was a ceasefire, Madam Ambassador? Is there any intention on that? No, not, not, no intentions so far. 